So the title of today is What is Mine to Do? And I'll read the description as was offered through Home Office, and then we'll see what we are going to do with this. We see a world in which personal responsibility joins with social conscience in the political, yes, I did actually say that, in the political, corporate, academic, and social sectors. As we live from the infinite wisdom within, we are guided clearly and powerfully to the arenas in which we may bring our innate gifts and delight in the difference we make everywhere we may be. So what is mine to do? Mine to do is to be the best me that I can be. Yours to do is to be the best you you can be. Mine is to be brilliant. My job is to be brilliant. Your job is to be brilliant. And in order to get to that state where you can so without apology stand up and say, man, I am the bomb diggity. To be able to say that without apology, some of you who haven't been here for the first time, we, that's our Donald phrase and we like to use it. So in order to be able to say that and not cringe, remember the old days, remember thinking, oh, she's conceited. Remember that? You don't hear that much anymore. But when I was young, I remember being in school. And for some reason, that was one of the judgments that went around about people who thought good about themselves. They're conceited. Now, the difference between conceited and confidence, you know what it is? Relationship with the divine. When you have a relationship with the divine, you get to say, I am brilliant, because you know it is the presence of God that is showing up as your brilliance. And okay, let's say you don't like God. Let's, let's say God doesn't work for you, okay? So then it's about the presence of the, and the power and the love and the intelligence of life itself as you. There is nothing you don't have. Nothing. We all are born complete. That is not a hallmark card. That is not just a cliche. We are born, it's like, um, it would be as if the Lego, a Lego set came together, already put together. Okay? We actually have that. The problem is, in the distractions of life and the judgments and, and, and the wounds and blah, 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 all that stuff, right? It kind of breaks it apart, and then we got to reassemble it. We think we have to reassemble it. So what is mine to do is to reassemble me in the state of wholeness. The world, the conflicts, that's our new, we love that word now, right? We don't want to call them wars or pro we call them conflicts. The conflicts of the world. Whoever shoots the first bullet, whoever passes the law that says women aren't allowed to be educated, whoever gathers the people that says, come on, let's fight. I guarantee you within the heart of that person there's pain. There's pain, there's suffering, there's wounds no different than you or I, because it is out of that that they are prompted to take an action to harm another, because when we're whole, we can't imagine harming another. When we're whole, we see wholeness all around us, and when something doesn't quite fit, we mostly don't go to judgment. We go to understanding that there's a skill set that's lacking. I have three sons. I'm very aware of lacking skill sets. <laughs> Life is interesting. But what is mine to do is to constantly pull on those skills and tools within me to rise up and above. Life isn't easy all the time. Some of us maybe currently are having challenges Maybe currently your mortgage isn't paid. Maybe currently your relationship is in trouble. Maybe currently you're, you're facing a diagnosis that isn't the most wonderful. That, any of those things can, can exist right now. So then what is yours to do in that moment? 
ask for help. Ask for help. We think we're alone, and you're not. We are not alone. Not only you are not alone because you are part of this community, you're not alone because the presence and the power of the one beloved one lives within you, and you are never outside of that source. Ever. Ever. Do you hear me? So what is mine to do in a moment like that is to remember I'm not alone. What is mine to do is, though, to be able to ask for help. I just came out of a three weeks of a dark, of a dark moment, and it wasn't, it wasn't because what happened was that horrific. It was the reminder that I hadn't healed old stuff. That's what it was. My son, who was visiting, um, landed in jail. And every old pain, every, every ounce of pain that ever lived at a cellular level in, every, in any cell of my body temple was suddenly exaggerated, and I was in agony. I was in agony. I couldn't be, thank, thank God the last three weeks I didn't have to talk. It was the right perfect time. I couldn't be brilliant, I couldn't be smart, although I pulled off some things because I know, that, I know that I can and I know that when I'm in service it makes me show up. So I will never just clear my calendar. So when I'm struggling I will never just clear my calendar so I can be in pain. Why? Because when I have to show up, it pulls all those things up from inside of me, and I remember who I am, because I am brilliant. I am brilliant, and I have the capacity to show up even when I'm in pain. I have the capacity to have compassion even when I'm in pain, because I have cultivated that so what is mine to do? It's to, it's to believe in myself. It is, to, it is to believe in the presence of spirit within me so much, so much, that when necessary, it kicks into gear for me. Are you with me? One of my favorite quotes of all times is by Howard Thurman. And I want you to really hear this. Don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go and do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. So the, one of the newest questions that I ask all the time around here when, when engaging people and, and, and hoping uh, to, to have people embrace their, part of, their piece of this community what gives you joy? What gives you joy? And that's what is for you to do. Because when you are in joy and you are engaging through a channel of joy, your body temple will be healthier. You'll be reminded of the, reminded of the place where spirit re resides within. When you give out of obligation, it makes it toxic. Don't give because you have to. Don't give because you should. Give because it feels good. Give from joy. So what is mine to do? It is to give from the place of joy, to serve from joy, and not because I'm obligated. So, because of that, very often I won't necessarily always show up or I won't, I won't give a yes to an invitation. I, I live a quiet life. I don't like a lot of big things very often, believe it or not. I like it here. I like when we're big here. I like when the room is filled here. But when I walk away, that's now my private time. 
So the one of the things for me to do is to honor my introvert. I'm an introvert. And the more I bec- <laughs> Did you hear him snicker? <laughs> Let me tell you what an introvert is, in case you think that, that I'm telling a lie. An introvert is one who gets filled up from within. An extrovert gets filled up from without. And in order to do that, I need to go away and fill up and get into quiet. That, yeah, what? Well, this way, but otherwise, because, you know, you see me out here and I'm loud and, you know, I'm acting, you're like, she's not, you know. I have, I have a little bit of both, but. And what my job, another thing that is mine to do is to know what is my responsibility and what is not my responsibility. We get very confused in this teaching. We, we get confused on what to take responsibility for and when to allow others to have their thing. I found a lot of freedom many years ago when I finally realized it was okay for you to cry. It was okay for you to be in pain. And I didn't have to run and try to fix you. And that I wasn't the source of your pain. And that as you felt that, if I trusted your process and just kind of made this space around you, you were going to rise up to the best you you could be without me trying to go in to fix it. Because when we're trying to fix someone else's pain, Really, you know what we're fixing is our own discomfort. So when we, when we do this work, you are always doing the work for the globe. So one of the things that's been happening around here, some of you know the story, and I'm just going to reiterate it quickly. Not a story, but what, the events of what's happening. The Presbyterian Church, who own us. Matter of fact, are there any cars in the driveway today or the parking lot? Huh? The parking lot today is full. Go figure. Okay, now I'm confused. They are selling the building, okay? So what's happening is that they are joining with a center up in Caldwell, so, I, I, Neil, is this what, the Sunday that they're, they're doing the service here first? Okay. So what's happening is they're going to do two services a day. So one, they're going to bring some of their congregation. They're going to do their services here. And then vice versa, then they're going to go up there. So they start to blend the two communities. The, the center that, or the church that they're going to, it's a huge, successful, gorgeous Presbyterian church with a school. Lovely. Lovely. So we are sitting in this place of the unknown. And back in the day, I would have been uncomfortable about that. I am proud to tell you that from the moment we found this out, I was so faith-filled that I knew something right was going to happen. I didn't know what, and I still don't know what. I don't know what that's going to look like. But I'm telling you, this is not a show. I believe that we are going to land right where we're supposed to be. I really believe that with my heart and soul. And in order to facilitate that, we've been doing visioning sessions twice a month. What I do know is that the entire community is invited, but there's only been a small handful of people who have joined, joined us in these sessions. So when, when I say to you, what is, or when I ask for you, what is yours to do, I ask you to consider showing up so that this community gets to reflect a little bit of who you are in those visioning sessions. Because when you lend your consciousness to that process, it, it moves through you. So you, it, the very fabric or the landscape of the whole thing will change, you know, because Maria was on the call that night or because, um, um, oh my God, Gary was on the call that night. You understand? So in lending your consciousness, you affect the outcome. Now, you're not responsible for the success or the failure. We as a community are. So I am telling you that we are looking very hard at a new location. And we're far away from actually making any announcements, far, far. But there is an amusing piece. The location of the new, the new place that we are looking at is down the block, down the block from, the, from the Presbyterian Church. <laughs> like, it's like, 
We're stalking them. They're going to think we're stalking them. Now, I'm far away. This, I'm, just, I'm telling you that only for your amusement. But waking up every day and speaking into the mind of God and saying, what is mine to do today? And then listening. Listening to those whispers. And then trusting your guidance is a beautiful way to live in right relationship in right relationship. Now, we're all different. I know that some of you are very technological, like you're very savvy in that way. I know some of you are not savvy in that way. I know some of you have more money, some of you have less money. Some of you have more education, some of you have less education. Some of you have more worldly experience, some of you do not. So what is yours to do for each one of us is gonna be different. But one of the most important things is that when we're figuring out what is mine to do, do something. And part of doing something, the simplest thing, is to not take offense. When given the opportunity, choose not to be offended when someone says something to you. You might shake your head. <laughs> you might go, Really? I get that. I do that with my sons. That's the way I survive my sons. It's just a little like, really? And then I move on. But I remember not to take offense because when I choose not to take offense, I am not adding to the ill of the globe. Do you hear that? That is the simplest thing that you can do. That is the simplest thing that you can do that adds to the transformation and the peace of this planet. You want to know what else? Look in someone's eyes. Be willing to see and be seen. Be willing to engage. Be willing because the world is so afraid to be seen. Oh, people are walk by, they, they just, you know, they, I watch people, I watch people talk to each other. I was at a meeting the other night and the poor woman, she couldn't look anybody in the eye. And she was talking to the group and she was all over this, but she wouldn't look anybody in the eye. It's one of the simplest gifts that we can give to each other. Listen, when you're listening, and you're talking to someone, listen. If you can't be present, let's say something else is on your mind. You, you, you have to go somewhere. And someone and I try engaging you in a conversation, you're like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Tell me you have to go. And go. But this way at least, I'm not thinking you're not present. You gotta go. These are the practical ways that we figure out what is mine to do by being the best version of ourselves. We're not going to be a good version if you're not present, if you can't sit and look at someone. Does, does this make sense? Am I making sense? Yeah. This is the practical side of this teaching, the practical application. My job when figuring out, and you've heard this, me say this in other ways, my job is to be in integrity, but not judge others if they're not. My job is to learn how to love and learn how to love myself and learn how to be fully present, but not judge others if they're not. My job is to be as conscious as I possibly can, but not judge others when they're not. You with me? So if we are raising consciousness, it is never to be used as a measuring stick for how someone else is failing. And yet I know the temptation. I understand that. I remember the arrogance in my earlier days. My job is to help people to learn how to hold things and respond to world events. 
over the years when there have been uh, tragedies and stuff, I, I would write up something and I'd send it out through a mass email and I would receive emails back and people would say, oh, thank you. Because some individuals struggle with how to marry what's going on in the globe in their own hearts. So I realized that that's my job. My job is not to need response. My job is not to need you to, to love me or approve of me. It's not my job. It's not your job to make me what I am. What is your job? If you ask yourself, what is mine to do, what is that? George, would you be willing to get me that microphone? Thank you. George is only with us today because it's raining out. Normally, he'd be down the beach. <laughs> <laughs> What is yours to do? I'd like to know who would like to tell us. Well, come on down then, Alfred, please. Come on down. I need you recorded. You want to be a speaker, but you don't want to hold the mic? Yeah, what's up with that? It's my job to be present. Come, yeah, it's the, it's the feedback. Thank you. It's my job to be present, to be aware now. Thank you. Thank you. You saw that from all the way back there. <laughs> Chrisula. <laughs> my job is to serve the universe as I live in the presence of God every moment of my life. Thank you. Someone else? And then you can hand that back. My job is to bring the light and to write the vision. Who am I handing it to? This gentleman. Oh. Yeah, my job is to not to measure myself with others or not to measure myself with anything else, but to know myself fully well that I'm complete uh, in, in the superior higher power or the spirit. Beautiful. Thank you. Are you going? Oh, I didn't. Um, so my job is really to be the best version of me that I could be, to be in integrity, and to love without hesitation. The other night, thank you, Joe. The other night I went to a salon, uh, one of our salons that happened, and um, what happened was there were the host of this, the co-host of the salon that night was Bernalee Garland and uh, Sylvia. Taylor, and what happened was the people we went around to introduce ourselves and those who shared were sharing how much they had heard about the center and the teaching and how these two individuals had represented the teaching. It was a beautiful thing to watch. So what happens is as these individuals are engaging the world, they're just showing up full and these people were so impressed just because of who they were being. My job is to know and believe that all the love inside of me, filled with the hope and joy, will come out to whoever's in front of me when they need it. Beautiful. Anyone else? My job is to realize through all the delusions that I have about myself and the world that at a cellular level, I am love, I am true forgiveness, I am true compassion and to try and live in integrity with those laws that I believe are true and to, be, to just send that love out, to be love. Thank you. Two more. Simon and then Jeff. I see my job as being an asset to myself and to my community. Beautiful. Would you hand that to Jeff? Thank you. And I believe that my responsibility is to be authentic not just outwardly, but inwardly. Because it is from that place that integrity comes, love comes, and everything can flow. Beautiful, thank you. By the way, to each of you who have just spoken, we didn't ask permission, but we are recording the video. 
Is it okay that we put this up on video? Okay, good, thank you. I should have asked. <laughs> I should have said that in the beginning to begin with. So my job is to be the best version of me that I can and to know that the Michelle on Sunday will probably be different than the Michelle on next Sunday. Your job is to see the difference by allowing that. My job is to know that the you you are today is different than the you you were a year ago and for me to allow that. Now, what do I mean by that? Very often we get stuck and we think that someone hasn't changed. We have a bad first experience with them and we don't let them grow and we don't let them change. We hold them in our mind in one way. Our job is to let people improve and to see, to see the newness. To see that. You understand? It's, it's, it's just human, human nature, but it's what we do. What is mine to do today? Mine today is to be brilliant. I'm here to be brilliant. And in that brilliance, make room for your brilliance. And then we make room for each other's brilliance all over the place. Yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Celine Fitzpatrick, come on up here. <laughs> what are you applauding for? She didn't do anything yet. <laughs> Celine is our other newly licensed practitioner. Why don't you? <laughs> yeah. she didn't hear any people. So Celine's going to do our healing treatment for this morning. I had no idea that was going to happen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So I invite you to close your eyes. And say yes to God. Yes. Say yes to good. Say yes to being present to this moment. To being present and open and receptive to this message. This message of love that has been given. This message of healing this message of knowing that each and every moment each of us is growing and healing and changing and becoming new and becoming more of ourselves, more fully expressed. That our wholeness is becoming more fully expressed. And so as I know that the presence of God, the presence of life itself is right here, right now, I know that the presence of life is being fully expressed in, through, and as each and every person in this room right now. And as I know that this is true, I know that each and every person is living from their wholeness. And I know that each and every person right now in this moment is living more from their wholeness than when they came in here this morning and that they are carrying this forward from this moment in each individual way that that looks in each person's life. And I know that even though it is unique, it'll show up uniquely for each person, I know that it will show up as love, uniquely as love through that person. It will show up as presence. It will show up as wholeness, as healing, as joy, as laughter, as peace. And so I know that everything is possible. And so I simply say yes to this truth. I say yes to this good. And I invite you to join me in a yes, just a quiet yes in yourself or out loud right now. Yes. yes. And so with deep gratitude for this moment, with deep gratitude for this truth, with deep gratitude for standing here right now. I say thank you, God. And I release these words into the law, knowing that the law always responds in kind. And please join me in saying, And, and so, so it is. is.